Now Francis is about to start. So off you go, Francis, and start. Thank you. Okay, so we're about to start our tutorial for our Snuggie. Um, I'm starting with the Amoogurumi part, and this is everything that we need. So to start off with, we've got our yarn. Um, we're starting with the yellow, but we've got a few other colours that will go into the rest of the Snuggie, probably more for the blanket. Um, scissors, as always, we need our scissors to um, you know, cut the yarn once we're done with it, but I think a lot of this first section will be done all in one part. Um, we've got a hook, we're using um, a size 4 hook today, and I guess depending on your tension, you'd go either larger or smaller, and depends on your preference as well, but I'm starting with a size 4. We've got our um, stitch marker. So we're using this today because we're going to be doing this one in the round. That's just my personal preference. I don't really like having to increase at the start of a row. It just gets up <laughs> being a bit messy and you have to try and find a good technique for it. So I just try and avoid the whole thing by using a stitch marker and working in the round. And what else can they use if they haven't got a stitch marker? What I usually do, because I don't usually have a stitch marker either, I usually just get a little bit of yarn and when you've got your stitch sitting there, you just pull a little bit of extra yarn through and then you just keep going. And when you return to that piece of yarn, you know you're back at the start of the row again. So yeah. that's what I usually do. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our needle for weaving in ends. Beautiful. And with reference to the crochet hook, um, this yarn does call for a four or four and a half. We're using the four because the migurumi part of the pattern has to be a little bit smaller than your crochet side. So Frances is going to use her four for her migurumi, but I'm going to use a four and a half for the actual blanket part. Yep. Okay. yep. The other reason is we don't have it here, but at the end of it we're going to stuff the toy. We've got some fluffy stuffing. And the idea is that if it's a little bit tighter, then you won't start to see that peeping out the edges. Okay, so I'll begin. I'll move some of these things over. I don't think we need all of these just yet. So there go our scissors and our needle. Whoops, there goes our needle. We're going to need this one shortly, so I'll keep it close by. But we don't need it just yet. And we're going to start. So, like we said before, um, with this yarn, there is an easy pull sitting right in there. Whoops. Easy start. I'm going to turn around just so you can see it. And you can just pull that out so we can get started. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be starting with a magic circle. I'm just going to take this off there. And also, uh, guys, if you're not sure how to do a magic circle, I do have a tutorial here on YouTube. It will be, um, the link to that tutorial will be in the description box down below. I'm going to make the magic circle now. So we start with our yarn. I'm going to start by just making a little loop. Oh, very different to mine, isn't it, Francis? Maybe just a little bit. I'm starting to think I probably just sort of made it up myself in the first place. I don't know if I, how exactly I ever learnt it. You probably showed me, then I probably made it up. No, so. I've never shown you because I didn't know how to do it myself. <laughs> in that case, a long time. I completely made it up. <laughs> um, so this is what we've got here. We've got a, um, our hook sitting there, with um, sitting, into, sitting in a loop. That's kind of our first stitch sitting in there. Yep, and either way, just give it a go because as long as you find something that works and it works for you, then it's fine. Beautiful, that's correct. If you really don't like the magic stitch, you don't have to do it. You can just start like normal. A lot of people put uh, two chains and they work in the second chain, the first chain they started with. Yep. So, yeah. But yeah, this is the way I like to go. So, this is how we start. As you'll notice, the, my hand down the bottom pulling that thread, that's how we make the loop smaller in the end. And this one sitting up here on the hook at the moment is our first stitch. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that first stitch. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. Stitch number one. We're done. Yay. We're on the home stretch now. <laughs> okay. So we're doing a magic circle. I'm going to put six stitches in it. So that was my first stitch. Single crochets. Yep. Six single crochets in Beautiful. there. Beautiful. I wasn't sure which one you meant then. Sorry, my mistake. Six single crochets. One. We've got... Sorry, actually that was number two. This is number three. A little bit more yarn. Now this is Francis' first time looking through the camera lens, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit awkward for Francis. Four. Five. And then six. Beautiful. And then we pull that magic circle nice and tight. So grab your string and pull it in. Okay. Okay, so we're about to move on to the next row, but first we're going to use our stitch marker. So this is what I do. You don't have to do it this way, but this is what I like to do. I prefer to put mine on the last stitch of the row. So this stitch right over there. So I'm going to go ahead and pop my stitch marker on. Oops. There we go. 
One thing about middle room, it can be very fiddly, can't it? <laughs> it can be very fiddly. Yeah. Once you get started, it's, you know, you really get started. Yeah. So there's after, my stitch marker. About the second row. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You get into the rhythm of things after a while. Mm. And don't worry if your magic circle's a little bit loose. You can sort of keep pulling it as you go. And at the end, when, you're, when you, you know, finish it up nicely, it'll be together again. Okay, yeah. so we're going to do the next row. Mm -hmm. and, and your magic circle at the end is not finished. You need to weave that in at the end when we're done. Yeah. Um, don't think it's not going to come undone. It will come undone if you don't weave it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for now, while we're still being gentle with it, and, you know, we don't have kids playing with the Snuggie just yet, <laughs> this should be fine. <laughs> okay, so this row we're just doing, um, we're increasing all around. So we're going to be doing two singles in every stitch from the previous row. Beautiful. Now let me go and find my stitch from the previous row. <laughs> this is the hardest row, guys. After that, it does become a little easier. It does. Trust me, it does. I know it looks awkward now. There we go. So I'm in my first loop. The first one's always the hardest one to find. There we go. So we've got stitch number one. And then stitch number two in the, same in the first in the, yeah, in the same stitch Beautiful. okay and then we keep going so that's two stitches so far into the next one and it's a little bit tight but tight is probably good for a megarumi yes you've got nothing worse than you stuff it with the uh, polyfill and then it starts to fall out because there's holes and gaps okay so that's two stitches two stitches in the second stitch yep let's keep going Looking good. Two stitches in the third stitch. Mm -hmm. That was two stitches in the fourth stitch. Two stitches in the fifth stitch. Up to the last one because you can see our stitch marker in it. Oh, that's why you put it in the, the one before. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's clever. Oh, it's totally different to the way I do it. Again, two in the see, second stitch. See how everyone does things differently, and yep. there's no right or wrong way of doing it, it's just different. Mm -hmm. So, I've reached the end of the row. You might have noticed I did give this thread at the back a little bit of a pull just to pull the magic circle in a little bit tighter so we know what it's really going to look like. Okay. So now at the end of that row, you should have 12 stitches. I'm going to move my stitch marker, give myself a bit more yarn as well, so that we get ready for the next row. Beautiful. Now that looks good. See, now it's going to be a little bit easier now, guys. Yep. Only we really need to focus on the next few rows because we're doing different kinds of increasing. It's not double increasing now. We're increasing by one every second stitch. Yep. And you'll work that out when Francis explains it to you. Okay, so that's row two officially finished. Stitch markers in and we're ready to keep going. Yep, ready. Okay. Okay, so we're starting row three. Row three, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Right. <coughs> Stitch markers in. Stitch markers ready. in and we're ready to go. Beautiful. So what we're doing in this one is we're doing um, a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next one. A single crochet again, two single crochet in the next one and continuing like that until we get to the end of the row. So we're increasing one every second stitch. So now you have 12 stitches. Mm -hmm. So if you're increasing one, you're good with math. Is that 18? <laughs> yeah, we'll have 18 by the end of this row. Beautiful. Okay. And by the way, if you haven't got 12 stitches, just find a gap somewhere where it looks like there's a gap and pop it in. Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> no. She's you telling should... you that if it was me, I'd be undoing it. And she'd be telling me to undo it and start again. <laughs> I would. I would. Um, no, if you haven't got 12 stitches, you do need to undo it and start again. But if you're really um, stressed about it and you, you struggled so much to do that first two rows, just find a gap and put it in there. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's, it's a bit forgiving as long as you end up with roughly the right amount at the end. And yeah. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the first one. Now this one was just going to be... A single crochet. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yeah. In there. And then we're going to do two single crochets in the next. Absolutely correct. You Absolutely got it. Absolutely correct. You got Oops. it. Yep. I pulled that one a little bit too tight. Oh, we'll do that again. It's all good. Nothing that can't be fixed in crochet, guys. Mm -hmm. 
That's another thing. When in doubt, do it again. Yeah, that's correct too. <laughs> and now you've got to do one in the next. One in the next. And then it's two in the next one. And then one. Correct. And then we keep going and do another two. And then guess what comes next? One. Have you guessed? A one. <laughs> oh. Don't give everyone away all the secrets, it'll spoil it for them. Mm. And try again to get into that hole. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. I think I've got it. Well, we're up to two on now. That one was one. That one is two. two. As you can tell, I'm messing with it because it's very tight. But that's good. Depends on how you like it. One. And then two. And then one. That's correct. And then your yep. The final stitch of the row. Um, if you're following on the same way I have with the stitch, by putting the stitch marker in the last one of the row, you'll end up with two. And that way, you know you've probably got the right stitches. Still go back and count if you like. Um, and I'll show you um, while you're there, Francis, when you've done, mm -hmm. just turn your work onto the side a little bit so you can have a look at the stitch above. Just turn it this way. See that? The stitch there. You know the V? Show them mm -hmm. the V. Do you know how to do that? There. These look like Vs. Mm -hmm. Okay. See how it's got little V there? Yeah. You count those Vs when you're counting your stitches. So you should have 18 Vs in the round. Yep. Once you've slip stitched. Not slip stitch. I'm sorry. Done all of your single crochets. All your single crochets. Yep. So I'm still thinking of slip stitching into the round, but we're not slip stitching. We're just single crocheting. Yep. <laughs> all right. Perfect. So now you're up to your third row. I've just finished my third row. I'm sorry, fourth row. Up to the fourth Hello, row. Hello, Mary. Wake up. <laughs> I'm going to move the stitch marker mm -hmm. so that I'm in the right place. Correct. And this way you just don't have to start a new row with increases. You can just keep going. Can I just say something? You have actually taught me something today, Francis. Have I? Yes, I am now officially going to put the stitch marker in the last stitch. Where did you put it? I put it in between the stitch. Oh, okay. And it was really awkward. I pop it right on the stitch because I want to be crocheting right onto that stitch marker. That's, that's perfect. I'm making it work for me. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's I'm so glad you've done this. I'm so glad we've done this together. So you've taught me something and I'm... You know, I've been crocheting for 100 years. <laughs> there you go. So now we're going okay. on to our fourth row. Yep. Um, and our fourth row will be single crochet two, single crochet in one stitch and then single crochet in the next and then two single crochet in the third stitch. Okay. Okay. So Let's do this. I think this might be the final increase. No, I think we might do another increase row as well. We'll see. Just do this one for now. So single crochet in your first stitch. Single crochet in the first stitch. You can find it. <laughs> yep. I guess that's where you have options. You can decide how mm -hmm. big it's going to be. So single crochet in the first stitch. A single crochet in the second stitch. Yep. And then we increase in the third stitch. So that's two single crochets in the third stitch. Perfect. You got it. She's got it. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Single crochet. single crochet. For some complicated maths, they're playing along at home. How many stitches are we going to have at the end of this? I failed maths. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't counted this far yet. So it's it's just eighteen plus six, isn't it? Yeah, eighteen plus six. And uh, twenty um well, I don't know, twenty-four. <laughs> Is it? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, stop there for a sec, Francis. What we might do, we might let you get to the end of the row and we'll come back and join you, all right? So yep. just continue. That was your um, last single crochet, was it? Um, that last one was a single crochet and I'll keep going. Yes, but what's the next stitch they need to do? Keep doing single crochets. Keep going with your pattern of um, single crochet, single crochet, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Beautiful, that's it. All right, we'll meet you up at the end of the row. Okay. Okay, so I've just come to the end of my row. I'm going to get my stitch marker and I'm going to place it at the end of my row so I know where I finished off. 
And now we're moving on to... Wow, what row are we up to next? Row number five. Row number five. <laughs> <laughs> you can get sidetracked when you're too busy doing. You forget. Yep. Yeah, it pays to actually have a little piece of paper and write it down for uh, the newbies out there. If you've just done this the first time you're doing this, mm -hmm. have a little piece of paper and mark what row you're up to. Depends how willing you are to lose count and then have to work it out <laughs> all over again. That's right. <laughs> okay, so um, what are we doing next? Now, we um, are we still increasing? We want to make it bigger? I think we'll keep increasing. All right. So we make it a little bit bigger. Yep. So in this increase, as you've noticed, guys, each row increases by one, if you think about it. So it's um, the last row we did, the one we just did was single crochet one, single crochet the next, and then two in the next. One in the next, one in the next, and then two in the next. Now we're going to do one, 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 and then two. One, 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 and then two. So we'll start off, just show you, and then you can head off and finish off the row. Yeah. So the first one, get into your yes. first stitch the row. That would be one. In the next stitch, another one. And then in the next stitch, your third one. That's correct. And two in the next. Okay. Yep. So actually, you're just increasing on after every third stitch. Yep. If that makes any sense. All right, so stop there for a sec, Francis. All Oops. you have to do, guys, while she fixes that little... While I fix that up? Yeah, I think this yarn might be splitting because we're using a smaller hook. Mm -hmm. You really should be using a four and a half. We're using a smaller hook for a mega roomy sake. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what it does is it splits the yarn, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now what I want you to do, we're going to let you go away and do it. You can do um, single crochet one, single crochet one, single crochet one, and then two in the next. One, 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 two. One, one, two. One, two, and so on. And we will meet you at the end of this row. Yep, at the end of the row, you'll finish on two single crochets in the same stitch, and that's how you know that you've got the right number of stitches. Perfect, I didn't think to mention that. <laughs> Thank that's you. That's the part where I always mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay. So, we just got to the end of the row. Same as before. I'm going to move need... the stitch marker over. Remember you needed to have two stitches in that last stitch? Yep. And otherwise, you can count them. But if you're pretty sure you know what's going on, you don't have to count. And again, I know Francis is a bit more of a stickler than I am. Mm -hmm. If you're one tiny little stitch out, it, it is, like we said before, a forgiving pattern. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be a perfect sphere, is it, Francis? Uh, no, there's some really complicated maths behind making a perfect sphere. Um, you end up sort of ca calculating your increases across rows instead of sort of having a consistent pattern every single row. So you can do that, but it sort of ends up being much less forgiving because it'll end up being a little bit off. Something like this gives you a bit more freedom. Um, and once you're done with it, it sort of looks a bit less clinical. It looks more like a toy, which okay. is probably a good thing because that's what we're making right now. We're making a toy. That's what we're making, correct. Yep. All right, so now with this row, what are we doing here, Francis? Okay, so very similar to the last row. So the last row was single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then two single crochets in the next one. This time we're doing single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then two single crochets in the next. Perfect. Just shut in the first set. Yep. So in the first set, we just go move on to our first stitch, which is the next stitch in the row. So that's one. Single in the next. Two. Single in the next. Three. Single in the next. Four. And then we do two single crochets. Beautiful. In the next stitch. Very simplicity pattern there. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong with that. So really you're only doing four single crochets in a row and then you're doing two single crochets in that very next stitch. Yep. And uh, meet us up at the end of this row and then we'll have a quick discussion of what we're going to do next. Yep. Sounds okay. good to me. Great. Okay. So I've completed the row and put my stitch marker up there. Um, this is the last row that I'll show you guys because I think you've got the idea of the pattern. So what I want you to do to decide how many more rows you want to increase, just pop it like that and just try and imagine how it's going to work out. So the idea is you want to make this big enough, um, just big enough that the baby can't pop it, the entire thing in his mouth just for safety's sake, or you can make it much bigger than that just based on your personal preference. It's hard to say exactly how many rows that's going to be. That sort of depends on your tension, your yarn size, your hook size, and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe I might do a couple more rows, but we'll see. Um, and I'll leave the rest up to you. You can just keep going. All right, we might just head off back to the main table for a moment and we'll catch you in a second. Okay. 
All right, thank you, Francis, for starting uh, the Amoeba Mimi section. My pleasure. Okay, we've come to an area of the uh, video where it's getting really long, and sometimes viewers don't like to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do part one of this section, and this is part one. Um, and we're going to come back next week and do... Part two. Part two of the Amigurumi section <laughs> of our dog. Now, as Francis mentioned earlier, I can't really show you because it's a bit far away. Um, just keep going for the increase for as, as wide as you want the head to be. Remember, don't make them small because baby can put them in the mouth and we don't want choking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just be weary. This is um, a little bit smaller than usual because Francis' tension is really tight. But with a Migurumi, you do need, I keep calling it Migurumi. I don't know if it's a Migurumi or a Migurumi. <laughs> <laughs> you can correct me if you like guys pop a little comment in the comment section down below and uh, correct me I'd be happy to take the, uh, <laughs> the advice and you know um, she she's done what she needs to do the increase row we got to was five wasn't it it was um, five single crochets and then two single crochets in the next stitch to increase great so your next row will be six single crochets in a row and then two single crochet increase in the next stitch six two six two and then the next row after that seven two seven two and then so on until you get to the size that you want you can have the biggest head that this <laughs> thing it's up to you right or you can have a medium size we still haven't decided what size we want yet a little bit bigger hmm. but we will come back at part two and show you how to do that in the next step mm -hmm. um, when you get to the size that you want and we come back next week we'll get on with that next step Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, um, if you're new to our channel, firstly, welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell button so that you can receive further tutorials in your inbox. Um, some of the stitches that Francis has performed, I've actually learnt two <laughs> things today. I've learnt a different way of making a um, start of what's called magic circle. Magic circle. <laughs> And I've learned that it is probably an easier way to put your stitch marker in the last stitch to help you remember that your last two stitches will go in that last stitch. Once you bump into it, you're done. Easy. Yeah. I've learned something <laughs> new and I've been crocheting 100 million zillion gazillion years, right? So thank you, Francis, for joining us. You will be joining us next week, yes? I will be joining next Yay. week. <laughs>